Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Siobhan and I'm a third year medical student studying at King's College London. And in today's video, I'm going to take you through the best resources to use the study in medical school and to basically ace all of your exams and to learn as much as you can because, uh, you know, that's really the point of all of this. But before we get into this, I want you to go check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already because I make videos about medical school and university. So I make vlogs, day in the light videos, videos about medical school, videos about getting into medical school, all of that. So check it out and if you think it's something you'd be into, then smash that subscribe button and join me for a lot more. Video. So like I said, we're going to be going through the best resources, websites, uh, apps, books, stuff like that, um, that are really going to help you throughout medical school and uh, yeah, can just be a go-to place for you to study for uh, written exams, OSCEs, anatomy, uh, pharmacology, all of that stuff. Without any further ado, let's get right into it. So I think all of these resources are invaluable and you should definitely check all of them out. But if I had to rank one of these resources above all others for myself and the resource that I probably use most so far in med school is QuestMed. Now QuestMed is elite. It's one of the best things that I've ever come across as a medical student. So it's basically a subscription based website where you have clinical questions, a massive clinical question bank, you have flashcards and you have a quest book as well which is like a textbook with all the clinical information you need and all the sort of relevant info for medical school uh, put together in a very concise and relevant manner. What I love about QuestMed is it's so personalized and you know, you can adjust all the questions to the level of difficulty that you want them to be and then you get flashcards based on the questions that you get wrong and uh, it's, it's really just an invaluable tool. I think they have some 4,000 questions or something like that on QuestMed so you would really never exhaust the question bank and by the time you do you've probably forgotten more than half of those questions anyway so you can just run through them again. QuestMed also now has an OSCE revision guide uh, or an OSCE subscri revision subscription with OSCE scenarios and various different resources to prepare for your OSCEs. I haven't signed up to that yet if I'm being honest. Uh, because my OSCE is much later on this year and I'm going to sign up for that once I get done with my written exam but I'm definitely going to end up using it because the other resources for QuestMed are so good that you know uh, I'm sure this will be great as well. Another amazing thing about QuestMed is that they've recently come up with a mobile app so I have QuestMed on my phone and on my la uh, iPad which allows me to just you know do questions wherever I am you know, check it out I have QuestMed on my phone, if you can see it there, and you know, you can just do questions, you know, during your journey somewhere or when you're just sitting and waiting somewhere or anything like that, you know, it's, it's just amazing. A second great resource, which is kind of like QuestMed, but it's another version of it, is PassMed. Now PassMed is pretty much the same thing, same concept, large amount of clinical questions and different question marks of different difficulties and uh, it also has a textbook of its own which you can study from making it a really useful resource for both you know taking notes and learning as well as practicing questions another similar but much less popular resource is called bite medicine so bite medicine is very similar to these two resources that i mentioned passman and questmed but uh, if, if you have looked into medical school at all, you would have probably seen what a conditions list looks like. So it's this, um, like, you know, on notion, like different condition, uh, different specialties and under that different conditions and different conditions have profiles underneath it. So this website is structured exactly like that. So it makes it very easily, you know, uh, it's very easily integrated into your learning. And also they have, you know, many different uh, scenarios and questions and case-based questions and things like that, which is also very useful. Now, one resource that I use for uh, my disease profiles or my conditions list really often 
is zero to finals so zero to finals it's great um they have great uh, sort of pages on each and every condition that is relevant in medical school so you know if i wanted to you know look something up on like you know let's say i don't know myocardial infarction they have a page for that or they have a page for acute coronary syndrome so if if i go for like you know ebd or something they'll have a page for that as well so you know uh, i really use that quite often when i'm making notes by condition it's a very concise bank of information the bmj best practice sort of uh, summaries are also really good for this they cover a lot of the clinical conditions in a very good way i don't use that very often but i heard that a lot of people do so do check that out as well if you want to now a great resource for oscis or your practical exams is um geeky medics so if you've started your clinical part of medical school you would already know what geeky medics is they're the go to place to learn examinations clinical skills and uh, yeah basically any clinical medicine like practice in clinical medicine anything that involves skills histories exams uh they cover that really well with uh, you know very detailed information on each exam each skill along with videos and stuff like that to back that up and uh, obviously that's much more helpful than just reading off of a page they also have some clinical knowledge and clinical information which goes along well with all of these exams and you know clinical skills and stuff like that but um this wouldn't be my primary source for uh yeah for like um knowledge on like of like diseases and stuff yeah the next one that we're looking at is the bnf so yeah i was on sure what the bnf stood for but it's the british national formulary and it's basically the guidelines the set guidelines to follow on prescribing and medications and everything surrounding that so if you go on the bnf you look up a medication or you look up a summary you'll find indications on where to use a medicine cautions side effects interactions everything you need to know about it basically so it's a great resource to prepare for your oscis because you will have prescribing stations in your oscis and you will have to use the bnf in that so being familiar with the bnf is very important see a resource that i know is like you know supposed to be very useful and people use quite often is the oxford handbook of clinical medicine i have that and i've taken it with me several times but i've never used it but i've heard it's extremely useful so i probably should check it out but i thought it was at least worth mentioning here and lastly we have anatomy so anatomy a very central part of medical school a very new thing in medical school it's not like any of the medical science you would have learned before like it's not like biology chemistry or something like that there's a lot of spatial understanding there's a lot a lot to remember a lot of new names so it's a complicated thing to learn in general now one resource that i mention all the time for anatomy to learn anatomy to revise anatomy is complete anatomy now it's a paid resource and i'll be very honest again i haven't paid for it and i haven't used it uh very much so far but i find the concept fascinating and uh the fact that you can actually you know flip a model around and like you know look at all the different parts of it and you know really go through um you know a uh, body and like dissect it virtually i think that that'll be definitely extremely essential very useful and uh i'm going to use it for sure and uh you should do yeah 100% but then other than complete anatomy you also have anatomy media which is uh, a really good resource it's more like it's not something that's movable and you can't flip it around but it is it is pretty cool like you can click on various parts and you can like you know see various layers of a certain anatomical part of the body you know different compartments that different you know and it's it's all in a written like it's all in a written form like and you also have aclins anatomy which is a video atlas for anatomy and uh, it's another very useful tool when you're learning anatomy 
Right. I think that's it. That's all the resources that I have to mention. Um, they're all pretty like, you know, standard things. But if you're just starting out in medical school, if you're in your first couple of years, um, you may not have been exposed to them yet. So instead of being exposed to them one by one by one, hearing from people and like, you know, stuff like that, I thought I'd just put everything together in this one video and hand it to you right now. Uh, so if there are any of these that you haven't heard before, you would have heard of them now. And uh, definitely go try and use them, experiment, see what's useful for you. Uh, different people find different things, uh, you know, uh, helpful in their learning. Uh, some people prefer a certain resource, some people prefer another one, like I like QuestMed a lot. I know a lot of people who don't like QuestMed as much and like PassMed more. Um, you know, so I, I, hope, I hope all of these resources help you in your learning. And I hope you found this video helpful in general. If you did, then uh, do drop a like down below and smash that subscribe button so I can keep, you know, giving you videos like this. Definitely drop a comment down below if there's anything you want to know, if you have any questions, if you end up using any of the resources and have any feedback on them. Do share it down in the comment section below. I'm sure I'm interested in reading it and I'm sure other people would be too. Do share the video with your friends starting medical school or in there who are going to be starting medical school in their initial stages of medical school or maybe even, you know, later into medical school, but you know, you're not, they're not using these resources, which is unlikely. But if that's the case, do share this video around and um, yeah, with that, I will see you in the next one.